morning lovely people how are you all today i hope you're well i'm feeling raring to get going in the garden sort of <laughs> got a few aches and pains from the other day but today is one of those absolutely perfect could not be more ideal days our temperature has dropped a bit hence i'm back in a long sleeve tea that may come off later um but we've clouded over, the temperature's a little bit cooler, so if we're doing hard work, it's so much more ideal. And we've had rain. Oh, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rain. So if you remember, was it two, three days ago? I was down here like a maniac, mad dogs and English women, out in the midday sun, breaking ground in bed number two, specifically because we were due rain. So I'll go and show you that in a second and I'll demonstrate with the path that I left untouched and the bit that I broke the ground on just why I did it because that rain has massively, massively helped. <clears throat> but also, oh my goodness, I popped down here quickly after the rain. Mm, it was heavenly. That beautiful, beautiful smell. Uh, What's the word? I always forget it. Petricor or Petrioc or pe oh, something like that. It's a P word. The smell of soil after rain. And it's actually it's supposed to properly release endorphins. And you know what? I think it did because the smell was beautiful coming on site after the rain. The colours, all the colours seemed suddenly really alive and vivid. All the myriad greens absolutely gorgeous the quality of sound was different even a sort of there was a stillness to the air so the sounds were sort of carrying but muffled on at the same time if that makes sense oh heavenly it's one of my favorite things is to come to the garden after rain anyway so that rain has helped and i did want to just say quickly um this is kind of note to self Generally speaking, before and after I come to the garden, if I'm going to be doing anything quite sort of physically hard, I do tend to have a bit of a stretch and a warm up beforehand and a stretch and a cool down afterwards. And I know that seems a bit, possibly a bit nerdy, but my goodness, it's worth it to look after our bodies, especially as our bodies get a bit older. Um, and by the same token, if I've really, really worked one group of muscles particularly hard one day, the next day I will just rest them. So when I did that groundbreaking, I was working my biceps and triceps in particular. I know I was because the next day they felt like jelly. But the next day, rest them, do something else using a different muscle group. And also in terms of my back, being tall, I've, I have occasionally had some back issues um, going way back sort of 25, 30 years ago. And I went to see an osteopath, I was given a set of exercises to do, and I do them regularly, even now, to both strengthen or keep all those muscles strong, but also to keep them nice and relaxed. So one of the other things I'm mindful of in the garden when I'm doing anything that might involve my back I try to rather than involve my back involve some of the other big muscle groups so think about quads and hamstrings and the glutes they're big muscles they can do some big big work so you often see this in the videos if I'm doing something where I'm bent over you'll notice more often than not occasionally I slip up but usually I've got my knees slightly bent and I actually quite often if I'm working really low I'll brace my torso against my thighs so my thighs and glute muscles in my bum are doing the work not my back anyway it did occur to me that maybe I could do um, a video a gardener's stretch routine video when I was lying on my floor the other evening doing my stretches and I thought yeah let's do a garden stretching DVD available in all good shops this Christmas <laughs> and I thought no 
there's no way on this good earth I'm videoing myself on the floor huffing and puffing and then struggling to get up again so no if you're wondering oh my goodness google there's a million and one things um out there online that you can google it's sort of back exercises or whatever but if you are particularly troubled by a bad back or any other area, please, please, please go see an osteopath or a physiotherapist. See someone who's qualified. They can give you a little routine to do to keep you well. So, <clears throat> I think it's time to go and do some work, isn't it? So I'm going to tackle the vine bed today. So break that soil down a bit more get to, to get it ready for planting the squash. And then if I've got time, what I'm hoping to do today is prepare the pepper and cucumber bed. Because all these things in the next week to two weeks will be planted up. So for the pepper and cucumber bed, I'll be a bit, blah, 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 blah. I will be, I'm excited to do everything today. I will be building a frame for the cukes to climb up. So like I say, if there's time today I'll do that and I'll show you what I'm up to but let's go and get into the garden I'm hoping this will demonstrate why I went to the effort of, of breaking this soil the other day in the baking sun here's the path I left these are now I've, I've decided actually I am definitely going to be leaving my paths in each year it will mean that I'll lose one row of winter squash but hopefully the upright ones will work and it won't matter. Anyway, so the paths are going to be left. Now, if I was to just try and... You see, it hardly makes a dent. So that's after a couple of nights of rain. Whereas over here, the ground that I did try and break up a bit, you see, it's so, so much easier to work now. What I also did was I scattered a load of the chicken poo pellets on it which come in this dried form so that rain has helped to just melt them a bit melt them that's the wrong word what's it what would you say dissolve them reconstitute them anyway the rain has helped them too so it was a four hour mammoth effort the other day to get this broken down but as you can see now hopefully just maybe sort of an hour over this whole bed today. Um, just breaking these lumps down a little bit further. I'll get it broken down, raked over, leveled out a bit, and then, oh, excuse the aeroplane, and then I'll cover it again in cardboard so that we don't lose this beautiful moistness the next time we have some blazing hot weather, which I think we're due again some next week. And then as I go, I can just pick out the big obvious pebbles. So yeah, that's the work for today. And I've just spotted a massive fox poo in the bed. So I think my first job will be, let's get rid of the fox poo. And then I can get tilling this bed. Woohoo! Right, tools down. Let's find something for the fox poo. You get the idea. <laughs> I'm also going to try and um, <coughs> empty, well, you saw that I emptied one compost bin a few weeks ago for the uh, vegetable cathedral, <laughs> bed number three, TP bed. But the other bin, may may just have some useful stuff in the bottom of it so 
as I make big holes for the squash to go in, I'm going to fill them with whatever compost I've got. Um, not just for their growing this year, but just for more organic matter. I'm going to need to get my plank out in a minute because I can't reach, which would be the great thing about having five mini beds per bed. I won't have my problems reaching anymore. Right. Plank. Plank time. Let's go get a plank. Shot. So I hope it's clear to see. Maybe that's come over here in contrast with the path. That's just where the plank was momentarily. But look, that's taken me 30 minutes to break it down a little bit more, to get those lumps out, to make it something that I can actually plant into. So I think you'll agree that the effort of four hours the other day in the sun was well worth it to, become, to be able to um, come along today and get this into this state in just, well, I don't know, 30, 40 minutes it's taken me. So what I'll do now is I'll just rake it over a bit because it's all hills and hollers and uh, just get it a sort of yeah a more even distribution and then really I won't I won't do much more because that's now loose enough for the plants to get away in I don't want to work the soil too much just a case of getting it so that the plants can actually get their roots into something so yay so if you're in a similar situation where you've got an area that's really baked hard and you are aware that maybe you've got some rain coming I would say it's well worth getting out there breaking it up as best you can and then letting good old mother nature with the rain do some of the work for you right let's get this raked over and then i can turn my attention to that end which is where the peppers and cukes are going to be just as i'm raking i'm spotting someone being a little bit naughty rosie what are you doing <laughs> Rosie, would you mind awfully to get down from my nets, please? She and this one, morning poppy, they're in a naughty, frisky mood this morning. They've been running at me and my ankle. <laughs> Look at you. Oh, Rosie, you're going to smash me next. Let's see you under here. Hold on a second. <laughs> yes, I see you. Retract your claw, you silly girl. Are you stuck? Shall I come and give you a hand? Oh, I think she's stuck. Let me give her a hand. She's not stuck. She's just been naughty. <gasps> Rosie! Oh, it's hard to be cross. They're so cute. Hmm. Maybe every, everything I've been blaming on the foxes was not all foxes. Oh, you are such a pickle. You are such a pickle girl. Whoops, sorry, that was a bit fast, wasn't it? Right, I'm gonna get on with my raking. You carry on being daft. <laughs> Rosie, Rosie, <laughs> so I'm waffling. I'm laughing. <laughs> oh dear. Right, and carry on raking. The other thing I've noticed after the rain, it seems the birds are just singing more loudly and beautiful than ever. There are much worse ways to spend your day, aren't there?
Ayan. Ula. You're enjoying the birds. Meditation on raking and bird song. And aeroplane. Try for a glass of water. I was just setting out some more seedlings to harden off and I thought, oh, while I'm here, let me show you because a couple of you have been asking about how is the grapevine doing? Well, as you can see, it's producing new leaves shoots. Yay! So it looks like it's going to be okay. So I was advised basically just leave it to do its own thing this year, see where it wants to go and then um, I can start to think about cutting back, training, finding whichever one's going to be my lead one. Just next to it in the corner, surrounded by all these bottles, is I've planted the first Akotcha. I have got another one as a reserve if this one cops it for whatever reason. If this one survives, I'll give my spare one probably to Gary, I think. The reason the cloches, well, the bottles are around it is because although it did have some days hardening off, it still seemed quite delicate. So I just put the bottles around it just to give it a bit of extra protection from any wind and also to create a little bit of warmth, a little bit of a microclimate in there. And then just the other side, I've got three of my loofah in. They were really desperate to get in the ground, so hopefully now they're in there, they'll get away. Um, I only intend to grow two of them, but I've put three in, just in case of losses. And again, I've got about, I think about three or four spares. So um, maybe for Gary, Catherine, some of the other folk who've given me spares. And then there's just some willow sticks going up to the wires just to give them something initially to climb up. Likewise with the Akocha, there's just a bit of old willow stick there going up and then obviously once they reach the wires, they can scramble away to their heart's content. So yeah, it's nice to get things in here. It's great to see the grapevine looks like it's gonna survive and do okay. And then eventually what I want in the front of this bed, not very much, but just a couple of um, native, are native wildflowers so um, 
I'm not sure yet. I've got loads of favourites, but all my favourites are based on my childhood favourites from my grandparents' place down in Dorset on the coast. So they're all chalk lovers, which obviously my soil isn't chalk. But yeah, that's what I'd like to have eventually is some native British flowers down here that are going to be beneficial to all of our gorgeous native insects. So yeah, this corner will eventually, hopefully, take off and become a very, very happy place next to my seating area, which at the moment, oh, I'm walking backwards. It's, um, it's a bit of a nursery, as is <laughs> the middle of the herb bed. This is, this is way more plants hardening off, but I put them in under the shade netting because we have been having really scorchio warm days. Far too hot for them to be in the cold frame, which is full of beans anyway. Our nights are warm enough for them to be out now, which is great. But yeah, like I said, this is just a bit of shade netting because I didn't want things to... Um, the first few things I brought down and didn't have shade netting on scorched and died. Oh, and this little wee fella in here, a new addition. Um, one of my neighbours has, uh, whoopsie, sorry, has just done some divisions. She grows mainly flowers. She's got beautiful lupins and dahlias and mixed in with some chives and bits and bobs. And this is a scabious. I'm not sure which type, but it's from the scabious family, which I love. I absolutely adore scabious. And it's a gorgeous sort of pale lilac colour. So... It should work really nicely with the lavender. I know the lavender's going to grow massive and bush out, as is the scabious, and they'll probably compete together. But uh, I don't mind cramming things in. And I can always thin things out a bit later on if needs be. Oh, happy days. All the, um, the herbs I planted a few days ago. They all seem to be perfectly happy at the moment. The borage had a bit of a nibble the other night. Naughty, naughty. It looks like they didn't really like their nibble. But yeah, they're all, um, they're all looking perfectly happy at the moment. And I think if we continue with this warmth and sometimes rain, it should get going in no time. Yay! Oh, I'm so happy to have the lavender. Oh, so, so happy. <laughs> What a lovely little session in paradise this has been. It's getting incredibly humid. You can see, I've taken layers off. So humid after that rain, but it's gorgeous and the birds. So I've done what I can for this morning. Um, I need to get home to do some other things, but before I do, I'm literally just gonna sit here for 15 or 20 minutes listening to that it's so beautiful so i haven't got around to building the cucumber frame today i was doing a bit more work on preparing that bed before i start to build so i've added some chicken poo i've added some wood ash it's all tickled in it's a little bit lumpy bumpy still so i think we might be due some more rain so if we have some more rain that will help however if we have rain it'll wash all that <laughs> wood ash away yeah, what I'll do is, if it rains, I'll let the rain soften the soil so I can get the lumps out a bit. And then I'll just put some more wood ash in. If it doesn't rain, I'll just have to crumble the lumps with my bare fingers. Are you all really happy with your gardens too? Oh, despite all the bits and bobs that aren't working. You know, it's just a pure joy to be out here isn't it never mind the veg the birds i've had the company of robins all morning of course as i've been raking up that squash bed the cats <laughs> as you've seen oh they make me laugh they make me howl they're so naughty but nice company so yes it's been a beautiful morning i don't want to go home but I have to, so I'm going to say cheerio to you all for now. Have fun whatever you're up to. I hope you're getting rain if you need it. I hope you're getting some sunshine instead of rain if that's what you need. Whatever you're getting, make the most of it and I'll see you again really soon, I hope. In the meantime, take care of yourselves everyone. <laughs>